Five episodes ago, I wiped my GTA 5 account and started off from a brand new fresh level one in GTA 5 online in 2024. Now, the reason for me doing this is a lot of people always ask me in the comment sections of my videos over this last year, how do I have so much money? Like, why do I always have like 50, 60, 100 million in my account? And there's still so many people that I see that are like, hey, you know, I've only got like 300,000 in my account or 400,000. It is so easy to make money in this game. And I thought, you know what? For this new year, I'm going to start off a brand new account. And I'm just going to do a beginner's guide walkthrough to show you how I make all my money. Now, there's not going to be any gimmicks in this. I'm not doing anything off camera either. Everything I do, all the money I make, you guys are watching here. So anyways, you can hear in the background, you can probably hear the submarine. So let's show you where we're at and get you updated. 188,888. You know what? I'll take it. Listen, on my main account, this is like cash chump change. On this account, that is a lot of money. So uh, if you just make sure you're signing in to get this amount of money because it's nice. But if you're watching this in the future, I'm sorry that I got some money given to me by the game. So after that nice surprise of money, we're here in our Kasaka, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, we are currently... Let's actually put all of our money into the bank. All right, so now you can see 2.3, almost 2.4 million. And we're only four or five days into this. Make sure I turn off, <laughs> mute the mic there. Uh, we're like four or five days, five days into this account. Brand new account, 2024. We've got 2.3, almost 2.4 million sitting in the bank. We own a Kasatka. We own the Acid Lab. But that is about all we own. So if we look right here, you can see we don't have a CEO office. We don't have an agency. We don't have an arcade. We don't have any other business other than the Kasatka, which we are currently in right now and an acid lab. Now, one of the main reasons for picking up this Kasatka, as you guys know if you watched last episode, is number one, we get the Sparrow. That's going to be a vehicle that we're going to keep and use from now, from here on out, until we get the Oppressor, which I'm in no rush for. I'm happy with the Sparrow. But for here on out, that Sparrow is going to be our workhorse. Also, this right here, the KO Perico Heist. Now, I could, if I wanted to, set this thing up again right now and knock this out and we'd have another million on us but we did do this yesterday in yesterday's video i did a well not yesterday's video but i did a new kayo perico heist meta uh, so go check that video out i'll leave it linked at the end of this video so you can check it out uh, but that was on this account so that's how we have that money but for this episode in particular we need to start off one place. And that is going to be right here at our acid lab. Now, the reason for this is if you remember, we actually filled this up not two or oh, like two episodes ago. And um, we want to make sure we're on top of that because we are a new player. We are going to be purchasing a new business in this episode, by the way. If I haven't mentioned it already, we will be purchasing a new business. And we're going to be using that business to take ourselves all the way to the, the greatest of fortunes. But anyway, let's just go ahead and purchase some stuff here from Mutt. And then we'll go ahead and boost acid production. There's actually not a lot in here. Not as much as I thought there was going to be. So we're not even going to worry about selling it right now. Usually at the beginning of my day when I jump in, I would just sell this really quick. But since we don't really have that much product, I'm not even going to worry about it. But what we're going to be doing here today is purchasing our very next business. I was going to say first business, not first. We're actually raw. I'm, I'm, we're doing a great job, by the way. We're right on track to where we need to be. We've got 2.3 in the bank. We're not wasting our money. Let's go ahead and purchase our very next business. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this business, as you already know from the title and thumbnail, is going to be The Hangar. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything that I'm going to do to set it up. We'll have a, a hanger guide later on, but this is still going to be a guide. I'm going to show you what I do when I first purchase it, what it is I'm looking for, how I'm going to fill this thing up, how to fill it up the fastest way, how to maximize the profits. All of that I'm going to talk about in this video, but I will do another. I'll wait to see what you guys want to hear from me in the comments. And if there's anything specific, I'll do another more in-depth guide. But for this one, let's go ahead and purchase our new property. So we've got a couple options here. Down here at the Los Santos International Airport, we have two hangers and they are the cheaper hangers. You can see 1.2 million and 1.5 million. Now, unless you're looking just for storage, like if you're looking for a storage unit for your vehicles, your planes, that's when I would purchase these. But if you actually didn't mean to click out of that, but if you're looking to actually use this as a business and make as much money as possible through it, you're going to want to go up north right here to Fort Zancudo. 
Now, the reason you're going to want to come here is one main reason, I'll be honest with you, is when I was a low-level player, which I currently still am, you're constantly, you know, flying up this coast. And if you don't have uh, your own business here, a hangar here, every time you fly over this thing, you're going to get a five-star wanted level. So purchasing one of these hangars is going to make it so you can fly over this as much as you want and you'll never get a wanted level. But the second reason, and arguably more important, is the missions, right? The source missions. The majority of them, well, they're kind of spread around the map, but a lot of them are going to be in this area right here that I'm circling. You're going to get a lot in Sandy Shores, a lot in like Polito Bay. And then you do have a couple down in the city, but for the most part, you may skip those like I'll show you that I do sometimes. But either way, this is 100% the location you want to be at. Now, out of these three, which one do you choose? Well, for me, that is an obvious answer. It's going to be the cheapest, which is this one at 2,085,000. And there is a one for 2.5, but that's 600, that's like 600 grand more. What's the point? And then this one is like 3.3 .3 almost million. It's not worth it. They're the same size. They just look different outside. So go for the cheapest one. Now, another thing I would mention, and I usually would do this, my main account that I have, I actually did this, which is I only purchased these businesses when they were on sale. Now, the problem is with doing a beginner's guide, I could be waiting a week. I could be waiting six weeks, six months, a year. I don't know when these are going to go on sale, but I know for me, I want the hanger right now. And honestly, in two days, when we find out what the new weekly update is going to be, if I find out it's the hangar, I'll be fuming. Uh, but it's just the way it is. So anyway, this one right here, hangar 3497, is the one that we're going to be purchasing here today. All of this, again, if it goes on sale, I'll upgrade some of this stuff. But, but for me, we're not upgrading it. It's a waste of money when you're a low-level player. Same thing for the lighting. Same thing for floor graphics. Not worth it. This is all visual. Same thing for office furniture. I will do this eventually. But right now, I'm not going to do it. I'll wait until it's on sale. Living quarters is an important one, unfortunately. So we are going to have to purchase this. Um, it's it's going to make me broke here to purchase this. And technically, I don't need to. Well, well we're going to make this money back, I should say, by the end of this episode anyway. So we are going to spend the extra 235. And then the workshop, we're not going to do that. I never use it even on my main account. So purchase 2.3 million and 20,000. Yes. Purchase successful. You can see we are now back to 22,000 in our account. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for that Lunar New Year gift we got at the beginning, I wouldn't have been able to afford that. I would have had to go, well, I could have sold this and we would have been able to afford it. Or we would have just done the Caprico heist and got another million. All right, so what we're going to do is grab our new vehicle, which is going to be a godsend. It's actually arguably probably better. Well, no. I was going to say it's better than the, uh, the Oppressor Mark II, but the Oppressor Mark II is much more nimble and easy to fly around but it does run out of missiles whereas this the sparrow you can just spam them and it just never runs out but anyway you're gonna go to service vehicles you're gonna go to kasaka and you're gonna go to request vehicle sparrow and as you can see sorry yusuf i'm a little busy right now that wouldn't have been a bad business i did say i was gonna buy that business we'll probably buy that business not next maybe next probably next I'll admit there's two business there's two more businesses i want and then honestly i'm done i'm happy i will start making millions and millions with just the businesses that i'm talking about anyway let's go ahead and speed up until we get to the hangar all right ladies and gentlemen and here we are at our very first brand new hangar it's the same like i say as the hangar that i have in uh, on my main account i have no problem you know what's annoying is the fact that i'm such a low level player than my driving. Look at this. Where's the hell? Flying skill is so low and you do feel it. Like trying to fly this thing, I do not have as much control as I usually would. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing that happens one of the mechanics in this game. The more you fly, the better you get at it. it you really can't notice when you go back and start off as level one. But anyway, here we are. We have our very first cutscene. So I'm going to fast forward through this because if you haven't done it yourself and you're a new player, I don't want to ruin it for you. All right, guys, and here we are after that long spiel that I just had to go through, and I'm sure you did yourself. Um, here we are at our very first. I keep saying very first. It's our hangar. It's our hangar on our new account. And um, we are only, what level are we? We're at level 24, and we've got, well, we've got no money anymore. But we do have a hangar. We do have a Kasaka, and we do have a freak shop or an acid lab and those are the three businesses i would say are probably the best for a solo player in general there is a few more businesses we're going to be buying i already have those planned in my head um, but this is going to start us off for greatness so if you're following along 
Uh, make sure you're spending your money on things that are going to make you money and not things that are going to just cost you and make you broke. Air fried setup. I forget it's been so long since I've done this that I have to do a stupid air fried setup mission. Deliver the mogul to the hangar. You got it. All right, so like I say, for almost everything we're going to need to do with this hangar that you're going to watch in this video today, this sparrow is going to be your best friend. So let's go ahead and head on over to the mogul. All right, here we are at our location right here. And obviously, we can't shoot it because we don't want to blow up the plane. So let's go. And like I say, we still don't have... We still just got the guns that we've started out this game with. We are literally broke, man. All right, excuse me, sir. I don't know how that first one wasn't a headshot. Excuse me, where are you? There we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is what I always do in this situation is make sure you always return your vehicle. So return options, return to Kasaka. That way, our when we when we try and spawn it again, we can do it. Basically, so we can just respawn it and we don't have to wait for it or anything like that. We've already sent it back to the uh, to the Kasaka. All right, now we just got to take this thing back to. Of course, it's starting to bloody rain. Now we just got to take this thing back to our hangar, which is going to be super nice and easy. I should also mention every single thing you do with the hangar, whether it's the setup missions, whether it's going to be the source missions or anything like that. You should be doing it all in a invite-only lobby. There's no reason to do this in a public lobby. We'll get to public lobby stuff with the hangar in the next episode when we do like a proper hangar guide. But for this one, there is no reason. All of the stuff we're doing in this video should be done in an invite-only lobby. All right, so we're here at our hangar. We're just slowing down here a little bit. As you guys can see, the Wanted Star is just taking forever, which it seems to do all the time these days ever since the Salvage Yard update. Uh, but we're just going to do a little circle here and wait until these cops go because there we bloody go. All right, now we can turn this thing. Get the landing gear down. Where are we? Where are we? It's so bloody. Why? I want to record my videos in the daytime. I wait till the daytime for you guys and it bloody... You get this weather. No one saw that, right? Because I didn't. You know why? Because the bloody weather's awful. All right, anyway, here we go. I could have landed closer, to be fair. We were being a bit too uh, too, too cautious here on this one. But anyway, before this tank comes and rolls us, runs us over, there we go. Delivered. All right, so now we have our console after that little easy setup mission. Is he just going to be waffling? I'll come back to you in a sec. Okay, so first and foremost, you can see... Okay, so he stops yelling at us now. So, as you can see here in source, we have a few of them. That's, we just set it up. You're gonna, Everyone's going to get these. And then to sell, you go all the way to the end. And you can see we can sell all of it for 90000 which we're not going to be doing right now. But what we are going to be doing is we're going to be doing an hour doing hangers. You guys know how this works. So, what we're going to do for this episode, we've just set up this business. I'm going to spend one hour doing hanger missions and i'm going to tell you which ones i'm doing we're going to walk you through some of these here together and this is just an introduction to the hanger next episode we're going to do a full hanger guide showing you how you can make millions of dollars in just a few hours with the hanger but that's going to be next episode this one we're going to see how much we can do in an hour and i'm just going to be walking you through some of the basics so anyway as always all right there we go i have set a timer for one hour as you guys could see and we're just going to go for it Okay, so which one are we going to be going for here out of this selection? Now, it depends on how you're doing it, but for the sense of this video, for the sake of this video, we're going to be trying to get 10 units. But it's not going to be 10 units of one thing. It'll be five units of two different things. The reason for that is because we're going to do one and then the other, one, other, one, other. We're just going to keep going back and forth. That way, we don't need to worry about the cooldown. So we're going to want to go for the thing that gives you the most amount of money for just five units, which is counterfeit and tobacco. These two down here. Now, they do have the highest cooldown, but since we're doing them back to back, it doesn't matter. We're just going to be getting five of each. So let's go ahead and start this up. We'll start off with tobacco and alcohol. Now, this is the other thing you need to make sure if you're starting out. Always 100% of the time, do land. Always do land. The missions are so much easier. And it's just, your life will be just so much easier. Now, here's the thing. La Mesa, right? You're probably thinking, this one's far away. It is far away. With your Sparrow, it'll probably take you around five minutes, right? So you could, if you were one of those people like myself, and just for the sake of argument for this video, what I'll do is I will set my preferences. Well, it's already on the hangar. And we'll just spawn into another invite-only lobby. Now, doing this 
will always reset the timer, but you will get a different mission. Now, the La Mesa one, that one's not too bad. Like I say, it'll probably take you around five minutes to complete. Some of them can take you like eight, nine, ten minutes, which I will never do. But that's the point in this video is to show you like the setup missions and things like that. Um, but we're just going to come straight back here, sit back down again. So we're going to go to source once more, select, make sure again it's on land. Now let's see what the mission is this time. Richmond. This is by far the easiest mission you could get. If I had my oppressor right now, we would do it in about two minutes. But since I don't have my oppressor, we are going to have to use our sparrow. And I had to spawn it because obviously I, uh, I didn't have it here. So anyway, it still should only take a couple minutes to do. We've already wasted 30 seconds here, so we can ignore that. So let's just take off or add 30 more seconds. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, we're going to head on over to Richmond. I'll show you how easy this thing is. Let's speed it up till we get there. I wish the weather was better. The game hates me. All right, so here we are coming up to this house. Like I say, I have done this. Hand on my heart. I have done this mission in two minutes with an oppressor. But obviously, it's going to be a while until we get an oppressor here. So what you need to do is behind this house, you see this big yellow house behind it, there's going to be something you're going to have to blow up. Uh, you can see it right there. You see the um, the, the garage right here. You're going to shoot right down there. I pressed the wrong button as if I was in an oppressor. Okay, let's make sure we don't hit that lamppost. So it's just going to be that one. That took it out, which is perfect. Now, if you had an oppressor, again, you wouldn't really need to worry because you don't even need to get off your oppressor. But since we do not have an oppressor, we are going to have to run. I still don't think we're going to be able to fight anyone here. We're just going to get in and fly away. The sad thing about having a sparrow, like I say, it is made of paper. So if these guards start chasing you right now, they could damage this very easily. Didn't damage it really, to be honest with you. But anyway, we're in and out of there just like that. You just have to run into that garage, grab something, and run out. Again, if you're on your oppressor, you can fly on down, shoot that box in the back with the oppressor, and then just drive in with the oppressor, grab it, and then drive out. You don't even need to get off your oppressor. But anyway, let's speed this up until we get back. All right, so there we go. This one took us about three, just over three minutes by the time we land here, because I still don't have all skills on my flying. So it's going to be a little longer for me. Um, about three minutes 30, so it's about a minute and a half longer with the sparrow than it would be with the oppressor but that's understandable but anyway that's our first one done we've got our first one now let's run upstairs and i'll show you exactly what we get next okay we're gonna source and then you can see there's a cool down there we're not gonna do that we're gonna go straight for counterfeit and we're gonna go land on this one and by the time we get back that one is gonna be which one is this la mesa you know what we'll do it just to show you guys it but it is far away. Like I say, with an oppressor, you just jump on it, fly, and it's easy peasy. But we, I'm trying to convince you that you don't need an oppressor to start out with. And you don't. Not that we could afford one because they're 8 million. Um, but I think within a week, we'll be able to afford the oppressor. Like, I can already hear my helicopter struggling right now. But anyway, let's speed it up till we get to La Mesa. All right, so we're coming up to the location here for our next one. Now, this is going to be another one of those where, unfortunately, I'm going to talk about the Oppressor. Um, the impre It's just the greatest vehicle for grinding. I mean, if you're doing missions like this, there is nothing that comes close to it. You won't even have to get off your Oppressor. You just fly on down into here, blow up this thing right there, which we should have just done. Yep. And then you just drive straight in. You don't even need to get off your oppressor. But unfortunately, since we don't have an oppressor, we are going to have to get off. We are going to have to run in here. We are going to have to grab it, then run back out and get back in. And I would assume more than likely at this point, our helicopter is going to take a lot of damage to the point where we may even have to actually pull out our gun here to take some people out. You know what? Nope, they're taking their time. They haven't quite got here yet. They're shooting at us, but they're not doing too much damage. We should be able to just get out. You can hear it. It's struggling a little bit, but it's not dead yet. We're going to push this thing to its limits. And that's as easy as it is, that mission, right? You can do this, like I say, if you have an oppressor in about four minutes. Uh, but it's probably going to take us five minutes because we're in a, this thing and we have to get out and run. Anyway, let's get back to the hangar. All right, so here we are. We are back. I was about to say, I didn't know where that lamppost was. This is PlayStation 4. Yeah, it didn't even bloody render in. Almost crashed into it. Uh, 
the one good thing about PC, man. The graphics are incredible. Um, so here's the thing. The Sandy Shores mission, which I hope we get next. Um, that is the three-bit gangster. Yeah, that's me. That's what they call me. Uh, that's the best mission. It'll take you literally like two and a half, three minutes to do. But I remember a video I did recently on the hangar. I literally got the Sandy Shores one back to back like six times. It was incredible. Uh, but we should anyway. You can tell by the amount of time it's taken us to do these. Hasn't taken us long at all. Um, we should be able to get the 10 that I want within the hour. So anyway, we're going to source again. And as you'll see, this one, the cooldown is gone now. So now we can start this one up. Okay, so this one is La Mesa. Is it the same one? It is. We're just not going to do it. It's as simple as that. So I'm just going to go online. I'm going to go find new session. Invite only. All right. And then we just do it again by land. Yes, please. Now, the La Mesa one's not that bad, to be fair. But I'm trying to show you guys some of them. Polito Bay, we're not going to do. Now, the reason Polito Bay is a no-go is this is one of the submarine missions. Now, there's three different locations for the submarine missions. There's the Polito Bay one. There's one in the lake, Sandy Shores Lake. What's it bloody called? Why am I forgetting? And there's one down south near the um i'll show you so there's one up here at Polito bay which is the one i just showed you there's one that could be down here and then there's one all the way down here now the three submarine missions will take you honestly with a sparrow especially you're looking at like 15 10 15 minutes man i may be exaggerating a little bit but they take a long time and it's just not worth it at all it is much quicker to waste your time backing out and going back in than it is doing those missions, I promise you. But if you've never done them before, definitely try it out. There's no harm in trying it out, but I just wouldn't waste my time. Okay, so this one is an infiltrate the deal. These ones are good, but this one, again, it's just too far away. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me on this strategy doing this, but it's just... That, it's going to take you like eight minutes and I just would rather back out. I just don't want to fly all the way over there and do it, man. Again, if I had my oppressor on me, maybe, maybe, uh, just because it is much faster at getting in and out than the Sparrow. But even then, I know that there's so many missions around me that I'm willing to waste two minutes doing this. And I know wasting two minutes doing this will still be faster than going down there and doing it. I promise you. Okay, we have another infiltrate the deal, but this one's close. So this one we will just go ahead and do. But since we have re uh, gone into a different lobby here, we are going to have to go to service vehicles, Kasaka, and then request a vehicle. And it should come up right here next to us. So you can see it says infiltrate the deal, and it shows you a trailer on your mini map. Now, the reason for that is you're supposed to head on over there, or they want you to head on over there. Kind of like sneak in a little bit. You can see the trailer and the gear inside the truck cab can be stolen to infiltrate the deal undetected and steal the cargo. It's just too far away. Like if we look at our... Oops. I'm sorry. I'm used to... Where's that truck? It's all the way down here. And then they want us to come back up here. Like Rockstar, who are you, who are you trying to convince here? Um... Why is it facing down? What is happening? I'm so used to the Xbox controller because I play X I play on PC the majority of the time. And uh, so getting used to jumping back onto PlayStation and the buttons are all just different, man. It's a pain in the butt. Anyway, it's speeded up till we get there. But basically what I was saying was you don't need to go and get the truck trailer. It's a complete waste of time. This one's actually fairly close. There's another one even further away that I feel like is easier. Uh, but we're just going to have to blow up. You know what? We're just going to take out everyone right here. Now, this could be one of those ones that could damage your Sparrow. So, don't try and get too close to them. Because uh, these guys have a lot of weapons. There's a lot of people down here. It doesn't look like there is, but we're shooting that truck down there, essentially. All right. So, after a little bit of blowing these guys up, I just want to make sure there's none of them around me. All right. Let's switch to homing off. And we're actually going for, like I say, that truck, which just fell onto its side right there. So, we're just going to have to throw a few rockets at it. And it should. One more. Or is it two more? One. That was it. One more. And you can see... Uh, shoot, another one there. Nah, you, were, you were lucky, my friend. You did kind of crash into a wall. So you can see it's underneath here. But we should be able to just land on it like that, as you just saw. And then just fly away. So even though it was underneath the truck, you don't need to get out of your helicopter. Just land on top of the 18-wheeler uh, the or the, the cargo container on the back there. And you'll be fine. And it was that easy. That was, what, three minutes? All right, let's get back. All right, so that was about three and a half minutes. All of the missions you do for your, for your cargo warehouse or your hangar, I should say, they should be between two and four minutes max. You shouldn't be doing any of them that take longer than that because you're just wasting your time. Even with the Sparrow, you should be doing them that quick. 
Infiltrate the deal. Another infiltrate. We like the infiltrates. Only the close ones, though. We didn't like the La Mesa uh, infiltrate, but we do like this one. This one I actually feel like is a little easier. Um, or maybe I'm just... No. Maybe it's easy with the oppressor. We'll find out here together. Um, <laughs> but it's another easy one. But you're basically just going to be doing these back and forth, back and forth. If you like grinding, like solo grinding... They, actually, I think this is the same one we're doing again. We're doing the exact same one again. We are doing the same one again. The other one I was thinking of is a little bit more to the left over there. So this has got to be the same one again. Um, but like I say, if you're a solo grinder and you love just making money and you don't mind, you know, put you could put a YouTube video on on your screen next year or put a movie on or put a live stream on or something and just do this. It's not difficult at all. And you'll be able to fill up quite a bit just within an hour. It's not incredible. When it goes to two times pay, it's incredible. And when you give it a little bit more time, like if you were to do this... Um, for like a couple hours. I'll I have a guide, like I say, coming up later this week. But um, you can make a lot of money doing this. But for the sake of this video, we're just doing it for an hour to showcase what we're doing here. All right, let's take out these guys once more. And make sure we keep our distance. All right, I think this should be just five rockets. Is that it? it? Surely it is. It is. You can see it on the mini map. You see that green package? That's when you know you got it. There you go. You just land on top of it and get out of there. And I can hear a little bit of noise coming from this sparrow, but it's okay. We're good. And just like that, again, it's going to be about a three and a half minute one. It's the exact same mission. It should be maybe even three minutes for this one. Nah, it's another one. Just over three minutes, like three minutes, 10, three minutes, 15 seconds. Still super fast. But if we do any more of these, I'm just going to skip over it because you've already seen me do it twice now. I just want to show you at least all of the ones that I do once and show you the ones that I skip. Sandy Shores Airfield, my favorite mission. So this one's going to take, it's going to look like I'm taking too long here because I've already wasted like 20, 30 seconds. But uh, it's because I didn't have my sparrow out ready to go. Now this one, I do have some tips and tricks up my sleeve for you guys, 100%. So... We're going to ignore that, though it's taken us 30 seconds just to even leave this place. <laughs> we'll deduct that 30 seconds here at the end. Uh, but the Sandy Shores Airfield one, this one, especially, specifically with an oppressor, can take you like two minutes. Um, but there is some tricks to this one. At least on PC, I'm not sure about consoles. So what I'm looking for right now, the reason I'm squinting, is because there's going to be three options for this mission. It's either going to be at Sandy Shores... It's going to be over near the farm or it's going to be over near the airstrip. And on PC, you can see the, the lights from the helicopter. So as you start getting close here, you can see the helicopter lights. It looks like on console, you actually can't. I don't see the lights. They're not here. They're not there. Hmm. It's definitely not here. It's going to be in one of these two. But again, I oh, I see it. Okay, so the helicopter's over there. And on PC, again, you can actually see the package you're supposed to be getting. But I don't see it on console. Oh, no, I do see it. It's right there. Okay. Let's see if this is easier on PC or on console, shall we? So we're just going to be dropping this bird down right here. No one should shoot at us. All right, we got it. Whoa! This thing decided it was going to do a somersault then. Jesus. All right, so we got it. We got in and out without any uh, without any of them being detected. Obviously, you're always going to get the police come after you. But on console, it's... It, I, mm, I'll have to do this one again. But typically, you fly towards Sandy Shore Airfield, and then you look in the sky in one of the three locations, and you should be able to see, even in daytime, the light from the helicopter. And before it even tells you the location you need to go to, you'll know it's that location because you'll see the helicopter lights. Now, once you realize it's that location, if you look at the ground, you should be able to see... Hold on, just make sure I dodge all of these police on the ground here. You should be able to see the package on the floor before you even get close to it because it'll show up glowing. But when you get close to it, it gets harder and harder because then all the foliage and stuff starts spawning in, the trees and everything. It makes it more difficult to see. But from further away, if you look at the ground, you should be able to see it a little bit easier. But anyway, once you've done that, fly on over like I am. Make sure you fly in the mountains. That way the police won't see you. And then we're just going to wait for these two stars to go, which again, since this new update... Oh, you know what? That one wasn't too bad. Uh, but since the new update, I feel like the Salvage Yard update, because we have the Cops and Robbers DLC coming, as we know about, 
the uh, clucking bell raid if you haven't seen that video i did i'll leave a link to the end of this video uh we went over everything we basically know all the setup missions we know all the mi we've done everything basically i'll leave a link to the end of this video so you can see it but uh we all the information's ready for us now so anyway that took what three and a half minutes four minutes usually that one takes about two to three minutes that one took a little longer than normal. But you can see, look at that. It's stocking up. And I feel like we haven't even been going that long. Sandy Shaw's airfield back to back. This is what I like. Typically, I like it again because I have an oppressor. But this is going to be just as good. Not quite as fast. Maybe a minute slower than an oppressor. Just because obviously getting in this thing takes a good, like, what? 15 seconds for it to start up and get going. Whereas the oppressor is just straight there and go. And then also trying to pick up the parcel that we're getting. Um, in the oppressor, you just fly over on top of it and get out of there. Whereas this, you do the same thing, but you have to kind of maneuver it a little bit more. But anyway, let's speed this up till we get to where we're going. All right, so same thing, day or night, you should be able to see a helicopter. I don't see it over Sandy Shores. I don't see one anywhere right now. Definitely not there. Nothing there, right? Definitely not. So where is it? Do we see? I don't see a helicopter on the left. Is it in? It's in the exact same place. Okay. So now that we see it, we're going to look at the ground. I can see it flashing. You see it flashing? It's right. I mean, I don't know what to tell you if you can't see it. But as you get closer, you can see the foliage starts showing up. So the rocks, the trees and stuff like that. It makes it more difficult to see it. Whereas we could see this coming a mile away. I don't know if it's going to be easier to get out. I feel like it's going to be easier to get out. See, this is why the oppressor is better. Because you can just fly over to this, pick it up and leave. Whereas with the sparrow, as you saw, it's a little bit heavier. All right, he's just spotted us. It's all right, we are out of there. Ooh, that gun, that gun did a lot of damage. What'd you shoot me with, a bloody bazooka? But anyway, it's just going to be the same thing. We'd have to get rid of this. Um, we'll get a new sparrow. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But basically this is the same thing just make sure you fly over the lake on your way back that way there'll be no police cars around you so your wanted level will be going down and then i always find as you get to this part here i always take a turn you can see the cop on the mini map but again we're just trying to make sure we don't go as close to the road as possible this is a train track so that's fine and then we're just going to stay up in the mountain don't go too Ooh, don't crash don't crash on me don't go too close close to that road on the left because there's a lot of cops that drive past there and uh, you don't want to risk it. So just make sure you stay up here a little bit. See? Look at him down there on the left. All right. And just like that, cops are gone. Let's take this thing back. I mean, that was only, what, 3 minutes 15 seconds? It'll be 3 minutes 30 seconds by the time I land this thing down here. Uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Especially since we had to actually get out of it. So if you are using the Sparrow, like me, don't go into the circle. Uh, what I would recommend doing is just go into services, Kasaka return options and return it that way when we pull out another one here next time it'll be repaired did you just see someone shoot at me am i going crazy did i just get shot by something we're in an invite only lobby what the hell just shot at me i'm so confused anyway let's continue but anyway we're actually basically done we've done what i said i was gonna do but we've still got time left so we're gonna just keep going all right, so we did have like about 20 more minutes left to be able to do this for like another hour, but we're just going to continue as I as we were going to do here. So you can see we have five and six and then a couple of the others. Now, here's the thing. If I was to sell these individually, I would get about $17,000 more for doing it individually, uh, but we're going to sell it all as a whole for 390000 Just That's going to include the other two as well, just so we can get a fresh slate here. I don't want to start doing like two or three sale missions. And also, if I was doing this and I had like 25 of each, which is what we'll start seeing in the next video I do, um, then of course you do it individually. But just for this amount, it's not worth the extra 17k for the headache you'll get. But anyway, 390. So let's continue on. This is about an hour's worth of work. Um, the reason I say that is because obviously we were about 20 minutes less than an hour. But I'll just add those other three on that we got. Those will add up to like 15 minutes. It's fine. But what we are going to want to do is do it in a public lobby. Now, when it comes to crates and cargo warehouses and things like that, I'll talk about it more when I do an in-depth guide on the hangar, probably later this week. You're talking a lot of money. This isn't like, you know, a few hundred thousand here or there when you start getting up. You're talking 
millions, multiple millions. You can sell like almost $8 million worth of cargo from your hangar. It's insane. Three people, not enough. But we're talking big money. Like I say, up to like seven, eight million for a full hangar. And you, you, people can be terrified of that. Do you do it in a public? Do you do it solo? We'll talk about that, like I say, in the video later this week. But for now, we don't have that much money to risk. Yes, it's a lot for us since we're a low level player. Um, but hopefully we're just going to get one simple, easy sell vehicle here. And uh, it should be nice and easy. No one's playing GTA today, huh? Either that or just the absolutely awful matchmaking that this game has is making it so I'm going into lobbies where there's only like one or two people. Don't get in bed. I was just trying to see how many people's in the lobby. Get your ass up, man. All right, so we're just going to do sell. We're going to do 390. We know it's going to be multiple, but we're not worried about it. It's going to be land. Make sure you always do land. You'll only get a single uh, land vehicle instead of having the bloody big helicopter. What's it going to be? Okay. So I don't have... So it's going to be a truck. I don't own the... Uh, the... The... Blah, 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 blah. The Pounder Custom. What's it bloody called? I don't own it. So what I'm going to have to do is use this vehicle since I don't have my own. And uh, the problem with doing this is it doesn't... We don't have armor in this truck. We don't... It's very slow. I can't crash into people or move people out of the way. It's a four-mile drive, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's pretty big. And without having our own, like, pound of custom on this thing, uh, this is slow. So that's the one downside. Usually, it's always good to own your own. That way tight squeeze that way not only for this but for the ko perigo heist when you're picking up the uh the long fin there's just so many better you know vehicles to have or better ways to do things when you have your own personal vehicles but we're not going to worry about it we're up here we're up north we've got a few miles here to go we've got 17 18 19 minutes to do it as long as we don't get destroyed by npcs which is always a fun thing. We should be good to go. All right, let's speed this up. I do see someone on the mini map, which I don't like. They're looking towards us. They're pretty far away, but they're looking towards us or driving towards us. They're right there. If he if he tries taking me out, he's on a little motorcycle. No, he's leaving me alone. So the one thing that's kind of annoying is the NPCs. Typically. Uh, you don't get NPCs. Even when you're doing vehicle cargo, you don't get NPCs chasing you in public lobbies because the game, they know. They're like, okay, well, you have a bigger risk of real-life people trying to kill you in a public lobby, so we're not going to send NPCs after you. But for some reason, they feel like it's a good idea to send NPCs when you're doing hangar delivery, which is ridiculous, as you can see behind us right now. The problem with this is they're shooting at me. You can see my cargo is going down, 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 down. And we've still got two miles to go. So it's kind of frustrating. I have had it happen before in the past. Oh, my God. That car was a, was a ploy to get me to slow down. I've had it before in the past where I've actually blown up from NPCs shooting at me. So it, it is frustrating. But anyway, let's continue on. We're going to hold our breath here. One and a half miles to go. Luckily, it would seem the NPCs that are chasing us are in very slow vehicles. Either that or they just can't drive. So it's not too scary. But we're only a mile away. So let's, you know, we're chilling. We're chilling. And this game loves to make the traffic um, immensely uh, busy when you're in the middle of something. When you're looking for a car, no cars around. When you're trying to deliver things or drive on roads... Yeah, there's traffic everywhere. Still 29 people in here, so we should still be getting a nice full payday. We are not off the radar. A lot of people are going off the radar. That is not us, though. All right, we're coming in here. NPCs still chasing us, but they should leave us at this point. And we should be bloody good to go. I can see the drop-off. Well, I can't physically see it, but I can see it on my mini-map. Hopefully, they don't make me back in. Okay, leave the area. That's fine. They did want me to back in. But we're just going to do it this way. All right. Can I just go? All right. We requested our sparrow. So that one wasn't a bad one. Like I say, you're supposed to back into that just to make it a little bit more difficult. But uh, the circle was actually pretty far back, so I didn't have to back it in. I could just drive and then detach it. But anyway, we should be able to just finish this here. And that would have taken us, what's that taken us? Like five, six minutes, I think. There you go. 500 and 70,000 for about an hour. It was actually less than an hour's worth of work, to be completely honest with you. That did not take us long 
at all. Now, that also didn't uh, that didn't include the bonuses of doing it separately, but we only did a little amount, so I would never do it for that. But 570k for less than an hour's worth of work isn't too shabby. So what I'm going to do now, let's head on back to our hangar. So this is our new business. You can see 572,000. Listen, I'll take it. This is literally just a setup mission, basically, the way I look at it. It was less than an hour to do. We made 570k. We got the hangar. We've set it all up. 570k in the bank. I'll take it. Next video for the next part of this episode or beginner's guide. Next episode, I'm going to be showing you how to maximize it. I'm going to be doing a full hangar guide showing you what it is you should be getting, how you should be sourcing it. Even though we showed a lot of the sourcing here today, you should definitely follow how I sourced them here today. But what cargo you should get and how long you should be doing it for to maximize your profits. And we'll be making millions in that video. Not hundreds of thousands, but millions. So anyway, I'll see you guys there. I hope you enjoyed this video on our beginner's guide. We've got two businesses now, the Kasaka, the Hangar, and technically three businesses because we have the Acid Lab. And we also have that to sell next episode. The so next episode... We're going to be making lots of money. And we still have the KO Perico to do today. But I'm going to do that off camera. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Goodbye.